Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York, and I'm Steve Toby. And today is February 11th, and today is the feast day of St. Blaise. And uh, when I was a little boy, uh, I remember on the feast of St. Blaise, they would bless everyone's throats in the church. Everyone would come up and have their Throat's blessed. He is the uh, patron saint of throat diseases. So we'll be reading a little bit about him. We have something from our mailbag, and our psalm is Psalm 54. And our Bible study, St. Paul's going to give us some more practical advice, sound advice. And uh, it's taken from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12, and we're nearing the end of St. Paul's letter to the Romans. And then if we get to it, our book, Come Let Us Worship, and The Dismissal. And we're coming to the end of that book, too. So, and of course, that's um, a description of the uh, liturgy uh, of uh, St. John Chrysostom. So, And then, of course, we have our evening prayers. So, let's get started. Let's put this over here. And St. Blaise was Bishop of Sebastia. Divine grace through which he healed the diseases of men and beasts, and especially of infants, made his name famous. He contested for the faith under Licinius in the year 316. St. Blaise is invoked for the healing of throat ailments. And the Apolitikion for St. Blaise, as a sharer of the ways and a successor to the throne of the apostles, O inspired of God, Thou foundest discipline to be a means of ascent to divine vision. Wherefore, having rightly divided the word of truth, thou didst also contest for the faith even unto blood. O Hieromiter Blaze, intercede with Christ our God that our souls be saved. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. St. Blaze goes there. And we have an email. And a picture. Now, actually, we had several pictures, but I was only able to put up one. Um, David Sauls writes to us, Today, a group of South Korean volunteers arrived at the school, and a new fence was installed with Father Antipas right in there working and sweating alongside of them. Now, um, we have been praying for Father Antipas and his ministry. And last week we learned that uh, a Swedish delegation brought building materials um, to rebuild the school and patch it up and whatever, and they were hoping to get some help to building a fence around the school. And the South Koreans, a a delegation from South Korea, had volunteered to do that and donated $1,000. Well, they showed up, and today they're building the fence, and there it is, so... Okay, thank you, David. Thank you very much. Like I said, there were more pictures, um, but I'm sort of limited in how I can put them up. So but there we have that one anyway. And thank you, Father Antipas. You know, in Africa, there's a lot of missionary work being done by the Orthodox Church, a lot of it. Now, most of it is actually being done by the Greek Orthodox Church. Um, and I don't know which uh, jurisdiction Father Antipas is on, but it looks like he's doing a lot of good work. It really does. Uh, now, David has a Facebook page where he's doing sort of an informal um, a fundraiser. So, David, you might share that with us, at the Facebook pages. So maybe someone would like to con- contribute. So Now, I'm going to blow my nose, I'm afraid before I start sneezing all over everybody. So this is rare. You get to see somebody blow their nose. Excuse me. Ah, okay. I hope that does it. All righty. Psalm 54 is our psalm today. It's a relatively short one. In fact, it is a short one, but not the shortest. 
So let's pray it together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. It'll be Psalm 53 if you're in the Septuagint. O God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life, and he will return the evil to my enemies, and your faithfulness put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. There we go. That way. Good. Okay, so our Bible study this evening is from Romans. There we go. Chapter 14. We start at verse 1. But before we do, let's see who's with us this evening. John Costas is here. Catherine. And blessings to Steve and everyone from Catherine. And let um, me see, Jonathan Nichols is here. And a peaceful night to, to Steve and all of you, he says. Violetta, my little Violetta is here. Uh, Brandy. Oh, Brandy, you're usually over on Facebook. Okay, well, the uh, we are currently driving home from Cheyenne. Now, uh, the Collins clan lives in Wyoming. I've known that for two or three years now. Yeah, um, and I uh, actually rode a horse through most of Cheyenne, one, Montana and Cheyenne at one point in my life. Can't say I'm too smart, but let me see. And Brandy says, thank you. They're in the car. We're grateful for technology, and we can still join all of you in prayer. Good. Um, Bernie Grant is here. Amy Green. Now, there's a new name for us. Amy Green. Welcome aboard. I usually am only able to watch the replays, but I'm great, grateful to catch you all live tonight. Well, Amy, it's great to have you here live with us. Now, Amy, if you have any prayer requests, you know, we have a lot of them, and we want more and more and more. So if you have any prayer requests, make sure you put them in the comments section. That goes for everyone, all you new listeners. Okay. Oh, Brandy says we have a, only one schnauzer tonight. <laughs> and let me see, Stacy Ballas and Stu Jones. Stu Jones is here with us this evening. And Lena May. Marianne Russell, Kurt Lytle's here, Joanne Manaski, Deborah Goodall, Anna Gennaro, Jay Russell, all my friends are here. Sanella, good evening, Sanella, Del Yo, and Jay with his usual greeting. Prayers for God's blessings and protection for all who listen to this. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Thank you very much, Jay. Look forward to your little prayers. David Sauls is here. Stelio. Now, Kurt says, St. Blaise is prominently written behind our iconostasis at St. Ignatius. He was also commemorated in the Roman Catholic Church before I became Orthodox. Well, you know, I was born and raised Roman Catholic. And that's how I found out about St. Blaise a long time ago. Long time ago. And let me see here. I'm going to have to get out my prayer list because Anna has a, has a prayer request for us. Put that to the side for a minute. And pr please pray for Rose, a parishioner of the church. Ah, she's in ICU. Okay, Anna. Anna G. Rose. And I see you. Got it. Got it. 
Bana, welcome aboard, Bana. Teresa Gonzalez, good evening. Katrina Bennett is here. Melania, good evening. Christ is in our midst. She surely is. Joseph Khalil, Boris is here. And Katrina says it's 2 a.m. in the UK. Just woke up to find you live. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. And Jerry Putus is here. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Jerry. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Okay, so we got one prayer request there. Now, if there's more, I'll be looking back, so don't worry. But let's get on with uh, our Bible study. Tonight we have a little help from uh, Father Lawrence Farley. We need it for tonight, for one part, at least anyway. So, chapter 14, verse 1 of Romans. Open your Bibles up. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over his opinions. That needs some explanation. And Father Lawrence is going to give it to us. Father Lawrence Farley. St. Paul distinguishes between two types of people the one who is weak in faith, and the one who is strong. The weaker one is characterized by what would later be called scruples, or an overly sensitive conscience. This one feels uneasy and guilty if certain rules are not followed. He perhaps has a more tentative grasp on the truth that God loves him just as he is, and feels obliged to observe certain practices. As said above, this is not a matter of having to observe these practices in order to be saved, as was the contention in the Galatian churches. And they believed he had to follow the law, the Mosaic law. It is more that he feels uneasy and haunted by a guilty conscience. So there are some people that, you know, if I don't say the right amount of uh, the Jesus prayer every day, my salvation's in trouble. Or if I... I uh, don't re, don't receive uh, communion every Sunday, I'm in trouble. Or if I don't make the right amount of signs of the crosses during the liturgy or during the day, my salvation's in trouble. You know, something along those lines, okay? So let's keep that in mind. That's the person that uh, St. Paul is saying is weak in faith. So let's just start at the beginning again. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes that he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. Um, some people believed that we should all be vegetarians. Isn't that the way God made us? You know, you look in the first three chapters of Genesis, and you know, God said, here are the plants, here are the fruits, you can eat of them. And, uh, well, of course, you know, all of the vegetarians ultimately drowned during the great flood in Noah's time. And uh, then God said, well, you can eat meat. Here's the meat, you can eat meat after that. So, you know, but some people will say, you know, God intended us to be vegetarian, so you know, I don't want to get in trouble with God, so I'm, I'm going to be a vegetarian. Well, that's their opinion. That's how they get along with God. Fine. It's not worth arguing about. It's not worth condemning them for. Okay, let's go on. Okay, one person esteems one day is better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Well, in the Orthodox Church, we have every day is a feast day. Every day is a feast day. Look at the calendar. Let me take the calendar down. You know, every day, get on the right month, Every day is a feast day. We can go right through the whole calendar. Somebody's feast day, or we're celebrating something every day in this calendar. You know, so every day is a special day, sure, but some days, you know, they stick out. They'll stick out. For example, when I was growing up, 
I grew up on the Canadian border just south of Montreal. And in the province of Quebec, there were two great holidays. First one was June 24th, St. Jean-Baptiste Day. That was the feast day for St. John the Baptist. And the second came a week later on July 1st, and that was what was called then Dominion Day, or is called now Canada Day. Well, you know, we had a beautiful golf course, beautiful golf course. And on St. John Baptiste Day, everybody from uh, uh, Quebec and their holiday came down to play golf in our golf course. And the cars would be lined up outside the gates, way out on the road for people waiting to get in and play golf. Now, that was a special day. The whole province of Quebec um, celebrated St. Jean Baptiste Day, a very, very prominent uh, feast day. Well, you know, one person esteems one day is better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Um, each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it, observes it in the honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. While the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. We're all in the Lord together, living and dying. Hey, we're all in the Lord together. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again. That was the purpose of Christ dying. That was the purpose of Christ resurrecting, being resurrected, and living again. That was his purpose, to bring us all to him while we live and after our death, at least physical death. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord of both, of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or say, why do you despise your brother? And some of us really do pass judgment, and even have bad feelings for those who do not believe and worship exactly as we believe. Now, you know, there are some things within the Christian family that we do differently, that we believe differently. And that's fine. That's fine. That's not the end of the world. You know, there, I think uh, there's five basic things you have to believe to be called a Christian. One, you have to be Trinitarian. Two, you have to believe that Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man. Three, I'm going to forget them, so. But the third is that you have to uh, believe that Christ died for our sins. And fourth and fifth, I can't remember off the top. But there are like five, maybe a few more, but... Five basic things that we all must believe. We must believe in the resurrection, number four. We must believe that Jesus Christ was resurrected. Okay? So, now we have side issues. Holy days, for example. Or fasting. Or how we conduct our, our liturgies. Or, you know, some of that is... We can have different opinions. That's, a, that's fine. That's fine. It's not the end of the world. You know, it's not the end of the Christian world. It's not. So, St. Paul goes on. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. God's going to be doing the judging. You and I, it's way above our pay grade. We should be more interested on saving, in saving ourselves. Now, it's a part of our responsibility to help others towards salvation. But we don't do it by judging, and we don't do it by having bad feelings towards other people's beliefs. State what you believe. State it gently and respectfully, as St. Peter told us to do, and you'll be okay. So, where were we? 
We will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written in Isaiah chapter 45. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Okay? So then, St. Saint Saint Paul goes on, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Each one will give an account of himself to God. Not required that they give an account of themselves to you or to me. Only to God. Okay. Thank you, Father Farley. Put this over here. And it's 9.20. We're ahead of time. Debbie Owens is here. Frida Mescos. Where have you been, Frida? I've missed you. I keep looking for your name. I missed you. Now I have a question for Frida. Uh, on February, what is it? February 23rd, uh, our Metropolitan is going to be in Syracuse. He's going to be at, in Geneva on the 22nd, and the 23rd he's going to be in uh, uh, Syracuse. Um, and are you going to be there? If I go there, will you be there on, on Sunday morning? I hope so. Now, Let's see who else is there. Alita and Samer. Christodoulos. Oh, I, did, I think I did good on that name. Christodoulos. Beverly Heckard, hello from Springdale, Arkansas. Anywhere near Fort Smith? Um, there's an Orthodox church in Fort Smith. I can't remember the name of it right now. And Brandy, is, well, she's on Facebook now. Okay. Brandy's going from YouTube to Facebook. Okay. Ah. Cheryl Rensest is here. Okay. So, let's go to our book. Our book. Come Let Us Worship. Now, remember, this is a guide, a practical guide. Not a theological book at all. It's a practical guide to the liturgy. Tells you what's going on in very simple terms. Tells you the important things to look for. And it tells you what you should be doing. What the priest is doing. What the choir is doing. And what your job is. Remember, this is a liturgy. Which means the work of the people. And all too often, the people aren't doing their work. So maybe this, this book will help. Okay? So... We've gone through the whole liturgy, including the communion. Now we're at the dismissal. And the priest says, let us depart in peace. The liturgy began in that spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. And in the same way it concludes, in peace. Now the priest offers a summary prayer, the prayer behind the amvon. For all people in every state of life, the amvon in ancient church temples was the pulpit, an elevated platform located in the midst of the nave. The priest came out of the holy doors among the people and stood behind the ambon to pray. Remember, that was an elevated spot in the middle of the nave. Just think of the middle aisle. If you have pews in your church, that middle aisle, and there was a raised portion right in the middle where the priest would stand and give this prayer. This shows the coordinated, coordinated prayer of the priest with all the faithful as all are about to depart from the church. Well, today he comes out in front of the holy door, uh, in front of the royal doors uh, and uh, says these prayers, uh, at least in my churches where I've been. The faithful join with the priest in this prayer for all. Give peace to thy world and to all of the churches. And we say churches because we now pray for the specific needs of each local organized sister church located in a specific place within the whole of the universal church. Orthodoxy is not a theoretical universal concept. It is a specific, tangible organization headed by a chief hierarch in any given locale. The communion of all these churches amounts to the presence of Christ in the world. In response to the prayer, the faithful sing the threefold declaration of the manifest blessedness of the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, 
henceforth and forevermore. Now the complete dismissal is said, and the dismissal the priest always summarizes the commemoration of the day, the Lord himself, his most holy mother, and all the saints, naming especially the patron of the parish church and those whom we festively commemorate that day. For example, today, if there was a, a liturgy, they would we commemorate uh, St. Blaise. This leaves us with a warm disposition to continue our inner prayer once we depart. We go forth in order to bring Christ into the world, not to leave him in the church temple. And that is important. We bring Christ with us into the world. What did Christ say? Let me read it to you. Matthew, let me read it to you. Here we go. He said, go, th go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you until the end of the age. He says, go, make disciples, baptize them, and teach them. We bring Christ out of the church, and we do what he commanded. Go, make disciples, baptize, and teach. That's our job. That's not necessarily just a priest's job. It's our job to get up out of our pews, bring Christ with us, out into the world, with us. Hmm. Okay. Excuse me, Father O'Grady. So, we go forth in order to bring Christ into the world and not to leave him in the church temple. The final word of the divine liturgy is a long form of the Jesus prayer. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us, to which we all respond, Amen. Not just the choir, everyone. The dismissal is complete. The custom of dis distributing the antidoran, blessed bread, while the hand cross is venerated provides the occasion for the reading out of the post-communion prayers. The deacon consumes the remainder of the holy gifts. All the clergy remove their liturgical vestments, and after making three bows, they depart in peace. Unfortunately, some have taken up the habit of engaging in small talk in the nave and even in the altar while the post-communion prayers of thanksgiving are said. This disturbs the quietness and prayerfulness that have been cultiva cultivated for the last hour and a half. All should reserve any talk for outside the nave once all are gathered together for the customary agape meal, coffee hour, the common meal of the par parish. Outside at the common table, all eat and share their joys and sorrow sorrows with love and serenity. We will have much to share with one another in the love of Christ, who now dwells afresh within us. So, Except for a few concluding remarks, that's the end of this book. And thank you, Father O'Grady. Thank you. All righty. Put my bookmark over here. Now, time for prayer. It's almost 9.30. Um, let me see. So, let's bring up our icon. Get rid of my forehead. You'd think I'd learn by now. Now, at the end of this prayer, we're going to put in our own, uh, our own intentions. So, if you come up with an intention, put it in the comments section and so we can find it, okay? I hate to miss prayer. I hate to miss prayer requests. So, oh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. 
O heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mor- immortal, holy... Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, Have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Now that the day has come to a close, I thank thee, O Lord, and I ask that the evening with the night may be sinless. Grant this to me, O Savior, and save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now that the day is past, I glorify thee, O Master, and I ask that the evening with the night may be without offense. Grant this to me, O Savior, and save me, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Now that the day has run its course, I praise thee, O Holy One, and I ask that the evening with the night may be undisturbed. Grant this to me, O Savior, and save me. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. O Lord our God, if during this day I have sinned, whether in word or deed or thought, forgive me all. For thou art good and lovest mankind. Grant me peaceful and undisturbed sleep, and deliver me from all influence and temptation of the evil one. Raise me up again in proper time that I may glorify thee, for thou art blessed with thine only begotten Son and thine all Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not made of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O Christ our God, who at all times and in every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, who art long-suffering, merciful, and compassionate, who lovest the just and showest mercy upon the sinner, who callest all to salvation through the promise of blessings to come. O Lord, in this hour, receive our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, and correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, deliver us from all tribulation, evil, and distress. Encompass us with thy holy angels that, guided and guarded by them, we may attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. And this is where we put in our own intentions. And I'll, before we end, I'm going to check to see if there's any last-minute uh, prayer requests in the comments section. Lord, we ask that you remember these who we are about to pray for. Pauline asks us to pray for Sheila and Stephanie, Elena for her, Jonathan for his health. He's suffered through an amputation, he's diabetic, and 
He's HIV positive, and we pray for him, Lord. We pray for him. Dina Triantis, for her granddaughter and family, that the family come to bed, come together, and we also pray for their health. Marianne uh, Russell, uh, for Connie, who just passed away, and Sharon and I, for uh, Sharon and I, for John, um, Kurt Lytle, for Father Benedict and the monks of the Holy Cross Monastery in Wayne, West Virginia, for Kristen, his daughter, doing better. Terry, suffering from pneumonia. Gail, for le- who's su- suffering from leukemia. And Rachel and Nicole, his other daughters. And Anna asks as we pray for Rose, who's in ICU, intensive care unit this evening. We pray for her. Serge asks us to play, uh, pray for him. He's being deployed. Um, he's in the service, and he's going on deployment. We pray for his safety. Catherine Salcedo for Bianca and Rodrigo. Jay Russell for uh, Tom Gall. Anna Gennaro for Reddy, her mother, who passed away this past November. Alita Hagos for her children. David Sauls for Shaza, who has cancer. And for Zephrin, um, both of them are in Syria. Both of them their husbands have left them. They're alone in a, in a war-torn country. Colleen, for her husband's health, back problems. Deborah Goodall, uh, for Kristen, who's suffering from thyroid cancer. Danella, well, we hope she did well in her test, and we pray that she did. Rufus, for the health of uh, Inez Stevenson. Marianne Russell, for Barbara, Greg, and Jeffrey, and Anne Hubiak. Kathy Xanthus for Sophia, Philip for Paul, Cherie for Geron, that he finds work, um, Debbie Owens, that she finds a less stressful job and one that perhaps pays a little better, Carol Lord for Karen, who has a relapse in cancer. And we're going to see a similar case later on this evening. Same thing. Joseph Khalil for Toby and Luke and Annabelle, and Gabriella and Odette, his mother, and Rania, and for his whole family, Teresa Gonzalez, for Nico, Antonio, um, Harula, her mother, and Arturo, her husband, Sanella Salika, for her daughter Zoe, and for Sanella's anger issues, Barbara Rome, for her husband and son, that they come to the Orthodox faith, Stuart Jones, for his family and for him, Shara, for Wilma Hamilton, and the health of her sister Susan, Brandy, for Carla, Adriana, for the health of her family and for her. She's been going through some tough times. We pray for her. Lena May for her husband and for her own intention and her health and her health. Um, Anna Gennaro for June who passed away. Deborah. Deborah's dealing with a, a loved one who has an addiction. We pray for everyone who has an addiction. And just as importantly, we pray for everyone who has to live or be with uh, someone who is addicted because that's a tough road to hold too. We pray for Deborah and her loved one. David Sauls asks us to pray for the Aid and El Assad families, Father Antipas of Nairobi and his ministry, and we've seen some results from our prayers in that. And for Maria Shalakova, Katerine Pappas, for her husband, Thomas. Um, Jacqueline Pierre for Tanya. Maria Kukadakis for her son, grandson, Phil. For he, he finds happiness and success in his new job. And Luana for Miss Terry Robbins and her intentions. Deborah for Kristen. We pray for Father Gregory. Ken Bowles <clears throat> for his safe return for the Philippines. And for Paul Collins and the health of his children. Sanella Silico asks us to pray for Anna. Annie and Chris ask us to pray for their family and son. Chris, Kristen Powers for her family. Z Francis for Amanda, Alexis, and Ray for their health. Uh, Jacqueline Pierre for her daughter and family. Ramona Antonesi for George, who has cancer. Valerie Goulet for Christopher. Elaine Hamlin for Ali and Ariana. Deborah Goodall for Father Patrick recovering from surgery. And Jay Russell for Jim Jackson and 
Carl Johnson, both of whom suffer from cancer. John Costas asks to pray for Nick, Aubrey, Barbara, Catherine, and family, Kathy Lee, Gary, and Tiffany, Leticia, Marianne, and Gina, and for Ralph Blakesley, who has severe heart problems. Brandy and Philip ask us to pray for Tracy and George. Valerie for Alexis, Marina, and Chris. Marianne Russell for Kathy and the newborn Violet. And for Louise, who has heart failure. Colleen for Marie and husband, and her husband for their health. David Saul for Fatima Muhammad, and the Mel- Melanie Kiriasu for her intention. And for Bill Collins asks us to pray for D and her health. Catherine asks us to pray for John, David, Brandon, Lexi, Nicole, and Nicholas, and Rebecca, Tiffany, Catherine, Gary, and Taylor. Now, Lexi um, has a friend, Deidre, who passed away this past week, and we pray for her. And Catherine also asks us to pray for Michelle Mann, who has a recurrence of breast cancer. I ask that we pray for Sarah, who's just coming home from the hospital. Augustine asks us to pray for um, his father and children. And Rufus for Norma, Vivian, Wilma, and Hazel. Bernie Grant for his family and his health. Benjamin for Joshua, Daniel, Lucy, and Lisa. Elder Millennial for his family and his aunt and his niece and his uncle who just passed away. And for his studies as he goes back to school. Katerina asks us to pray for Vanessa, Jasmine, and Daphne, Karen Kalanovich for her mother, uh, Marjorie, and for her children and grandchildren. Millie asks us to pray for Andrew, her son, that he comes to Jesus. Stacy asks us to pray for Michelle, David, Uncle Malcolm, and Michael, Zet for his health, Anna for Joseph, her brother, and for Daniel, her son-in-law, that he comes to Christ and brings his family with him. Joanne Manaski, we pray for Joanne's health. And Joanne, let us know how things are going. I know you're going to have some tests done. Joanne asks us to pray for her daughter Erin and Erin's husband, who's going to have some surgery himself. Ron Best for his intentions. Valerie for his son and grandson. Stephanie Acario asks us for our prayers. Paul Collins for his aunt and a special intention. Saspienza for Natalie, who has cancer, and Saspienza asks us to pray for her daughter. Sarah Fowler asks us to pray for Father George Bolas. He's taken a fall and he's recovering from it. Catherine Salcedo, for all of those who have addictions. And Catherine asks us to pray for her husband and Anna, who has departed. Elizabeth Mercier, she finds peace in the Lord. Um, Elizabeth was on, uh, in, in hospice. I haven't heard from her today, or I don't think yesterday either. Our prayers are with her. And Elizabeth asks us to pray for her friend who's in pain. Harold Bradford for his nephew. Serena Kellogg for her son and future daughter-in-law. And future mother-in-law that they have an increase in faith. And Zarina wants us to pray for her five grandchildren. Baron Helen for their children, Chris, Roxanne, and Maddox, and Ellie. Brandy for her studies in nursing, Gail for Scott, Rob King for his children and grandchildren, Jay Russell for Jackson, Michael and Kelly Hatton for their health and the health of their daughter who had uh, heart surgery, our James for the health of his brother, George, Laurie for David, her cousin who has cancer, Jessica from, who's suffering from kidney failure, Stravula for the health of Marie, Melania for Ingrid, Z for Jenny, Frank, Martine, David, Pat, and Z. Connie, for her children and grandchildren, that they come back to the Orthodox faith, and for the health of David and Evangelina. Valerie for Alexis. Uh, Nellie Cartvelli for Cotney. Del Yo for his intention. Luana for Aunt Benita's health, Uncle Keith, and uh, the health of James Grass. And Luana is looking for full-time work, full-time uh, job, and we pray for that. Norma asks to pray for his sister. Daisy Bellis for the health of her brother-in-law. Colleen for the health of Clay and for her new granddaughter, Claire Marie. And Colleen has a very special intention also. Rosanna asks us to pray for her. 
Bill and Brandy are looking to uh, adopt a baby from the Philippines. We pray that all goes well there. Vicky, for Sarah and Alexandra, her daughter and granddaughter, that they be protected from domestic abuse. Alione, for her husband and children. Susan, for Michael, Marina, David, Matthew, Elisa, James, Jody, Emily, and Samantha, that they return to Christ and the Orthodox faith. And Susan asks that we pray especially hard for David, that he gets the uh, gift of faith. And Susan asks that we pray for Sammy, that Sammy gets baptized. And Deborah asks us to pray for Tatiana Alexis, her brand new 11th grandchild. Amen. Baby's popping out. Okay, let's go around and see if there's any other requests. Norma, pray for my sister. She's having a hard time. Lord, remember Norma's sister, please. May you and Chuck's here. Tammy, good to see you. New face. And Sharon Toby is here. Okay. And uh, we prayed for Tom Gall, I believe. But if we didn't, and uh, Jay Russell asked us to pray for Tom Gall. I thought we mentioned him, but if we didn't, we please, please, Lord, for Tom Gall. He's recovering from diabetic infections in his foot. And he has heart problems. Katrina asked for prayers for herself. Elena? Elena asked for prayers for her soul. And that she finds work. Important. And Elena, we will pray for you. We are praying for you. Well, I got to pass this on to everybody. Randy Collins writes, When I was a kindergartner, there was a little boy that told me there was no such person as Jesus Christ. I beat him up. I likened myself to St. Nicholas. However, I was not placed in jail. It was, uh, though, a very long time out. This is why I asked for forgiveness all day long. It was a lesson my mom taught me, that I should be like Jesus and hate the sin but love the sinner. Amen. Thank you, Brandy. Max is outside. Report on Max, my cat. See if there's any more prayers. Care of Mother uh, Elizabeth asks us to pray for all of those suffering anxiety from the uh, coronavirus. And uh, those who are sick and those who have died. Yes, we do, Lord. Remember those, please. Estelle Yo says, God bless you, Serge. May you come back from the battlefield. Amen. Remember, Serge is being deployed. Leslie Britton is with us and Ron Best. Brian asks us to pray for George. He is having back surgery tomorrow. And we do pray for George. Lord, remember George. So, Lord, we ask that you uh, extend your healing power to all those we have mentioned, and to us, and to us, Lord. You know, there's so many that are suffering, suffering physically and spiritually and uh, emotionally. We all need your help and your healing power. Please extend that to us. And along with it, your love and your mercy, your kindness. Um, we ask the most holy Theotokos, the Virgin Mary, that she uh, adds our prayers and intentions to hers when she prays. And we pray that St. Blaise, our patron, our, our saint of the day, remember, remembers our prayers and our intentions when he prays this evening. 
and adds them to his prayers. So through the prayers of our Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Well, folks, I'll see you again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for morning prayers. And again at uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow night for the Gospel Minute Live. And we'll finish up Chapter 14, I think, tomorrow night. And we'll almost be there. Chapter 15 is a sort of a summary of everything that's gone on. So uh, we're getting near the end of uh, St. Paul's letter to the Romans. And if anybody's got a suggestion of what we'd like to do next, let me know. We're almost at the end of uh, Romans. We've got to go on and do something else. If you have suggestions, let me know. So, may God bless you. I hope to see you tomorrow morning for evening prayers. God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord.